Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Delusional's Arcade. So in this episode, we are going to change out the flyback on this K7000. This is the same monitor we've been dealing with for a while, the one that was in the Rolling Thunder originally. We did a successful tube swap on it. We recapped the monitor. Uh, we also uh, changed out these pots up on top here and we kind of refreshed everything and it's still having um, blurry issues where it is a little blurry. So as the last user, I'm gonna swap out this. I didn't wanna do it at first because they say the cheap Chinese ones aren't as good as the originals, but I have heard that these on the K7000s with the white knobs are pretty crappy. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch that out. I was gonna do it off camera, but then I said, you know what? Let me make an episode out of it so you guys can just see what I'm doing here. So without further ado, let's just go ahead and jump into the video. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna just discharge the monitor. I've already done it, and again, these are self-discharging, and after 10 minutes, usually they're fine, but it can't hurt to do it. And let me see if I can get under here. There we go. Sometimes they're a little bit of a pain, and this is, looks like it's a, there we go. So I don't know if I have issues with this or not. People are saying to widen this here to kind of make better contact. Um, and that could be your blurry issue, but I tried widening it, it still doesn't help at all. Uh, so yeah, so that's discharged. Always wanna do that, always a disclaimer. If you don't know what you're doing, with monitors, don't attempt this because you are dealing with some high voltage. Um, let's see. All right, so I guess what I'll do is I'll just get my driver. Okay. Let me just get in here. Ooh, I'm thinking it's the... Uh, 4900 goes the other way, but this one's the K7000. So it's really easy to take apart. Let me take this off. I've done this so many times on this thing. And then you'll want to disconnect this as well. And this is on here pretty good. Usually it takes, there we go, a little bit of force to get it off. So that's disconnected. We can kind of pull this out. And then there's the gouging wire right here. And let me get this out too. More room to work with. And then of course, the yoke. Okay, so we have this out. Um, that's really what we need. So I'm gonna take this and kind of pull it off. I'll go in front of the camera for a second. All right. So this is it here. So um, what I got was, I got it from um, Arcade Parts and Repair. You can see it says China on the top, made in China. Um, it comes with this little piece of styrofoam on the bottom to protect the pins. So this goes for about $29 on their site and it has all the wires that you need. There's the white wire, there's the red wire, and there's two red wires. And the one you know which goes where, um, like the thinner one here, is you can see it's a thinner gauge. So if you ever have this like disconnected or you need to switch anal cups or anything, always go with the thicker versus the thinner. Okay, so I changed the angle here. That way you guys can see what I'm doing. Um, and my head's not in the way because <laughs> that has happened in the past where my head kind of got in the way of stuff. Um, so I just have the basic tools. You know, you need a cutter. Um, I have this here only because um, I believe on the old flyback, you can see it has this little connector here and I'm, I want to kind of save that. I don't have this on hand where I can take it out. And I think you can put like a little pin in there, kind of remove it and resolder it. Um, but I'm not going to go through that whole trouble. Um, I'm just going to see if I can just cut it right here, put a butt connector right onto it like that. And then, um, you know, just put the new flyback portion on. So it's going to be a little colored a little differently. So some come in all red, some come in black. Um, I guess for this part here, um, you can see on the original flyback, you have this color here. You can just tell it comes from the bottom. When it's coming from the bottom right here, that's the one that you have to match up with the one on the bottom over here. And it's a thinner wire as well. So that's gonna be equivalent to that. That's the first thing I'm gonna do is just, uh, you know, crimp that on. And then there's a really thick one here, which doesn't connect to anything. It actually connects to the anode cup right here. And then you have the Last one, which is coming out of the top, which goes to the actual neck board. And we're gonna switch that out and solder that on there. I'll show you. Um, there's all different kinds of um, 
neck board, um, I guess, adapters. Uh, this one you have to kind of snap off on the sides and then you have to solder the pin right onto there, onto this wire. So uh, yeah, so we'll do that. Others just kind of just pop off. You swap them in there and just, just push it back together. Uh, so we'll do all that. Um, first thing I'm gonna do, if, of course, is just take this here and I'm gonna put the connector on there. It looks like it's soldered, so that's good. And I'm just gonna take my butt connector here, take it on the bottom here, and pop it in there, it fits pretty good. And just crimp that down so that's on there really good it's not going to come off and then i'll just take the other end and i'll give it a little bit i never cut them all the way to the end cut it right there and we'll take my stripping tool here and just take it right out so this is nice and thick here so it should be able to grab on. You know what, I'm gonna double it just in case. When I say double it up, what I do is, um, I'll just take a little extra off like that so it's, it's twice as long. And then I'll just twist it together. And then I'll bend it like this. So it's twice as thick there. And it really gives it a good beginning for it to kind of go in. So let's, uh, Grab this right here, the other butt connector, and I'm gonna stick that in right there. And it fits nice and snug, I can feel it already. So, it takes a little force to get it together, but this thing is never gonna come out. So that's pretty much, I'm happy with that. I can go back into the pin on the neck board right there. I'll do that afterwards. So, um, <clears throat> I'm not gonna connect any of the wires just yet. We'll do that afterwards. We'll, we'll get the flyback out first. Then we'll put the new one in there and then worry about connecting all the wires. So first things first, um, some people say you need to take this off. You don't really need to take this off. You can just get it the way it's angled. There's a lot of space from here to the top. So you can actually just lift it up and out and it'll work just fine. So I believe, let me see if I can get these pins. I'm using the default, um, I guess, tip for the FR300. And let's see if I can get around there. Yeah, I'm having a little bit of trouble because it's not sucking everything like it should. It still works, it just takes a little more effort. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch it out real quick. Let me go grab my tool to do that. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change it with this one here. This one's just a tiny bit bigger. So you should do this. I usually do it when it's hot. You don't have to wait for it to cool down. It's on and everything. You just put this on here. You can twist it off and then there's these little kind of little buttons here. Um, if you don't do that, it kind of just, you can take it out and you still can still see the tip there. But if you press the buttons, it actually holds onto it and pulls it out for you so you can get the whole thing off. And then all you do is kind of just dump it out onto somewhere where it's not gonna burn anything down. And then let me put this back in the holster here. And then this one here is the cool one, which you just drop right into there. And then I'm just gonna put this back in, twist it on. You're done. I just switched everything. So I'm gonna let that heat up because obviously it was cool when I put it on. I'll let that heat up for a minute. And let me just put this on the side here. I can't really get out. There we go. Okay. We'll wait a second for that to heat up. Let me just double check. I'm gonna take some solder here. Just off, off camera just to, let's see. I'm just gonna do that just to tin it a little bit. Oh, and I forgot, I gotta turn on my fan here. Gotta suck away the bad stuff. <laughs> you can see it's going across and it's going right across into the fan, away from me. All right, so that looks good. So let's see if we can do it a little easier now. Yeah, it's doing more and it's doing a lot better, in my opinion. So I'm not gonna zoom in. You guys can tell how desoldering is. <laughs> so 
So let's see, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten pins you gotta do. So I'm just gonna go over it a little quicker, quickly here, just to make sure I got everything. I'm pretty sure I got it all. And again, this will work with the default one. I just felt it'd be nicer to have the better suction of the bigger tip. All right, and I think I could shut that off. I think I'm good. All right, so now we'll just kind of turn it over here and it should come out. You have to kind of take these tabs out. So what you do is you just press on them here at the same time when you're kind of wiggling this thing out. Actually, there's a couple here. So one, two, and three. All right, I think that's everything. I'm just looking at it really closely to see if any are stuck. I think they're all three. Two hours later. Yeah, but it's kind of clipped onto this thing. I have that screw off, but then this part is just, there we go. It was kind of stuck on this part. Man. Well, hopefully you guys won't have that much trouble when you're taking yours out. <laughs> so let me just take everything off. We, got, we already took off the other wire. We clipped it off. We have that. And then we have this one here. So let's go ahead and take this out. And what you do, you got to be careful on this because when you, when you unhook this, it'll push up against these transistors here. So you can kind of bend them out of the way. This one's a little bent out of the way there, but we'll take this side off first and then do the other side so it won't it'll hinge this way instead of the other way so i'm just going to take a screwdriver i've done this a couple times let me just get a screwdriver that'll fit like this one and i can turn the desoldering iron off now so i just kind of get my screwdriver in there like that and hold it and then i'll just do the other side just keep blocking it there we go so now it just comes out like this and this is what I did on my original videos with my OutRun, my K7000. I kind of swapped the neck boards. I had to take this thing off. So that's soldered on right there. This right here, you just got to kind of take it off. And I keep turning off my desoldering iron. I don't know if I, maybe I'll try with this one. Should be able to just take it off. But if not, I'll suck it all dry with it. Yeah, I'll wait. For this to heat up here, and just stick it on right there. There we go. So you'll take that off. That'll go on the side. Let me just uh, focus on what I got to focus on here. Okay. So it's completely off. Now we're going to take the new one. So again. This wire going to the bottom right there is going to be equivalent to this red one here. And then we have the smaller of the wires, which I just desoldered from the neck board. That's going to be this other, uh, let's see, this white one here. That goes to the neck board. And then this one here obviously is the anode cup that gets replaced completely. So you're going to take this and uh, I'm going to keep it for now because I'm not sure if this is bad or not. Um, so I like to keep old parts. You never know. Never throw out stuff because then when you throw it out You'll be spending a lot of money replacing it. So It may not be that may not be the issue. It may not be the flyback. So We'll find out in this video Okay, so uh, Should we throw this on first? Yeah, I think so uh, Yeah, let me throw it on first. It'll give me some flexibility before I pop this back on so, again, we'll just double check one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There's ten pins on there. I'm just giving it a quick inspection, making sure there's no pinholes or anything in it. There are some glue spots here and there, but that's not going to affect it. And I watched that Tim guy's video. He actually replaced his on his K7000. And the one he replaced was this one. <laughs> he had a pinhole somewhere uh, where it was arcing against um, right here. So I guess if it were 
if we were to put it down. He probably had the pinhole like right here next to the sticker, I think, in that corner. And that was arcing on here and, and he changed it out. But it was one of these, one of these cheaper ones, which I'm not a fan of, but we'll see what happens, you know. Um, people are saying the bad, the uh, original one is pretty bad too. <coughs> and now I'm looking at these together. <coughs> this doesn't look like it has that extra uh, little screw there. So what I'm going to do is, since this, I'm not sure if this is bad or not. I'm going to put this back in here so if I need to put it back, I won't lose it. All right. But the new one doesn't have that little screw that you need. So... Okay. All right. So I'll put this in here, get these wires out of the way. So you know what I'm going to do too? It's always good to um, just quickly go over suck off all the solder completely just to make sure that there's nothing interfering okay now we'll put this back in so if you're doing a cap kit do your flyback if you're changing your flyback might as well do the cap kit all at the same time because you can get in there really easy i know we guys we, <laughs> we struggled when we were doing this guys these two things here um, all right, so let's put this in. I feel like we're taking a thousand hours to put this thing in. I'm going to kind of be careful of this little capacitor there. I don't want to mess it up. So I'm just trying to line it up here. So I have this thing bent to the side and I also kind of move this over. It kind of swivels a little bit. It has like a rivet on the bottom. So we'll stick this in here. Try to get these tabs on the bottom first. Looks like everything looks like it's gonna line up. And then now we'll put the top ones on. Alright, so you gotta kinda wiggle it a little bit. Once you get these two tabs on the bottom in there, now I'm gonna there. Now that one just hooked in there. Alright, so that looks good. <clears throat> Takes a little bit of finagling, but you can do it. And now I'm gonna get some solder. And uh, if you guys solder in the comments, what do you guys set your, um, I've got mixed reviews, what do you set your soldering station to? Mine's set to 750 right now. But I used to set it for 650 for the longest, but People are saying it's better to do it hotter because then you kind of get in there and it'll heat up quickly and you can get out quickly too. And the pads won't lift on you. But I mean, I think age really is what determines it. I've, I've kind of soldered some Williams power supplies like on my Defender and that thing was like, those things fall off for nothing, those pads. It's just the age, I guess it's old, but um, yes, yeah, so I'm just soldering all this on. That one, I need a little more. So yeah, so tell me what you think. I put mine at 750, that's like my new temperature. But this Hako, you can set it like at a touch of a button, it just sets it to whatever you want. So I can dial it down to 650 if I really wanted to, or put it higher. And that's uh, Fahrenheit, by the way. <clears throat> okay, let me just do this last one. My tip got dirty there. And there's, I guess there's some sort of flux or something built into this uh, solder here because I always find it makes it look brown. And that's not burnt stuff, that's actually just the flux. Right, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And now we don't forget we got to put that transistor back in. So. I'm going to go ahead and stop right there and just screw it in. Alright, and then that should be positioned correctly, and now I can just solder that back in. 
So that's right here. So it's in there. Nice. Um, before I do anything, though, I want to clean it up a little bit because I spent a lot of time cleaning up that board. Let me just grab some Q-tips. Have some alcohol here, and this is the good stuff. This is the 99% uh, uh, alcohol. I ordered it on Amazon. It's the only place I can see. If you go to the uh, drugstore, CVSs, and all that stuff, Walgreens, they don't have this thing. You need to get 99.9 usually or 99% and uh, so I just bought like a six pack or something It's really cheap on Amazon I guess I could put a link if you guys want to know what it is but um, keep it around because it evaporates really quickly and you'll see I'm kind of just going around what I just soldered and you'll see see the brown stuff that's the flux I just want to get that off there's a ton on this board anyway it's all caked around from when they worked on it but I tried cleaning it up a little bit. You don't have to do this, but I figured why not get all that crap out of there. Let's see how yucky it is. <laughs> so now I'm just going over it just to dry it, and it'll evaporate for the rest. So it'll be fine by the time we put it in. Cool. So let's get this other thing soldered on here. So we have this already we already crimped. We got the anode cup, and now we have the last one, which is this one here, which goes on the pin right into here. So I'm gonna, um, you know what? Normally, I'll what I'll do is I'll uh, I'll tin it, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna put it right in there. Should be able to squeeze it in. All right, that's good enough. Put a nice glob on there and it soldered pretty good. So once you do that, this goes up and then we can kind of put that cover back on. So I'm gonna hold it up here and slip the cover in right underneath. See how it's moving that? That's why you gotta be careful there. So it's a little too short, so I'm gonna stick a little screwdriver underneath and lift it up. It has to go up a little bit in order to snap into there, like, like so. Still not wanting to do it. It needs to go up a little bit more, so I'm just again underneath. There we go, I can hear it now. There, so that's in. And then now you just kind of just snap in the rest, so it'll snap in, like, we're looking at that right now. That's it. So one and two, they're both on there. So that's a new wire, it's nice and solid, it's soldered in there, plus you have this little thing protecting it. And then I'm just going to carefully double check my little transistor here, which kind of bent a little bit. And I do have spares of these if they do break, but I think it's going to be fine. Okay, so that's on there. We just got the anode cup and then this of course we can plug in to that little spot right here there we go all right so let's hook this back up i'll change angles again and we'll uh install this thing and see if it works in the tpg hopefully it'll be not blurry fingers crossed okay so i have a slightly new angle here so i'm going to take the chassis kind of put it in again it's easier if you have it out to plug everything in you have solid ground so I'm gonna do that first I'm gonna do that kind of off the camera here I'm just plugging in the yoke and then you can plug in this as well that's the degaussing and then we'll pop that in here and I'll secure it let me just get my bit back on here. Oops. Of 
course. <laughs> grab this one. I'm grab this one. All right, we can't forget, this is really important, do not forget to plug in this ground. It'll not be good. And by the way, I had, um, I, I just capped the Geo 7 from my second outrun. <laughs> and I forgot to connect the anode cup. I just left it lying like this on the table. So it was just like face up, you know, and um, I hear this just humming sound. And then I realized, oh my God, I didn't hook it up. So luckily it didn't arc or anything, but lesson learned. You know, and this is me. I think I just did that, I scratched it up, but it's fine. So let's hook that up. I'm gonna push this in. Okay. Definitely feels cheaper to me. Also doesn't have that metal that the other one does. This other one here, this is the uh, original flyback, has like a metal piece here. I could have stolen, I guess. Hmm. I don't know, should I? Nah, I'm going to leave this all intact. This is all original. I'm going to leave it alone. But this metal piece right here is missing. It's not on this one. It feels cheaper to me. Because it is cheaper. <laughs> but still, these things go for like $29. So that's all set. Um, I gotta plug in the wire. You cannot forget to plug this thing in. It's the ground. Okay. And we'll put this back on. Alright. And everything else looks good. So there it is. A nice new flyback back there. Looks really good. I like it. We'll see how it behaves. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn down. I don't know how bright this thing is set to. And I'm actually going to set this. I think it's turned on all the way actually. Yeah, it is. So that's all the way up. That's all the way off. The focus doesn't matter. Even though that's all the way off. Um, you want to set that low because you don't want any. I'd rather not have it set too high if possible. And then we could always just turn it up. Okay, so let me turn this around. Um, We'll kind of get a good angle here. I'll shut some lights off and we can kind of get in there and see what we got. Okay guys, so I have the TPG set up. I have the outrun here, uh, power source to the ISO, and I just got to plug it in. So I'm going to do that now. Fingers crossed. Always look at the back first. I hear stuff going on. I can see neck glow. Just making sure it's good to go. All right, and I have my TPG hooked up and I do have an LED here. So now, has a signal. Let's see. Uh, I gotta turn up the flyback. I'm gonna take you to the front now. See if you can see anything. And let's see. I'm gonna turn up the flyback here. And okay, so that's good. And the focus knob. And that looks pretty clear to me. <laughs> All right, let's move this around, see what we can see here. That looks good, I think we fixed it. Although it does seem a little hazy, just a little bit. It may not be the flyback. See, that's the focus knob. Okay guys, I wanted to give you guys a quick update. Look, looks beautiful. There's nothing wrong with it. And I'll tell you what happened. So it was not the flyback. It was what I suspected. Ironically, <laughs> these right here, I'm using my pointer. Uh, they're the transistors. You can see right there. So those are the transistors, the chroma transistors. There's one, two, three, basically um, for each set of knobs here. And uh, they were bad. And um, so I did that, but taking them out, you know, there were some traces that were kind of messed up. So I, you know, redid those and made sure that they were brand new when I put them in and bam, it cleared up the problem. So it wasn't the flyback. It was that after all. And ironically, I did order those prior to ordering the flyback. So 
I should have put them in, but I was like, nah, it can't be that. You know, it has to be something else because I had swap neck boards and stuff. So that's what it was. So now we have a brand new, like new monitor with a burn free screen. Right now it's running outrun, so I could tell that it looks really great. I'm going to pop on the TPG on there again in a second. Um, but yeah, so that's what it was. It was these right here, these transistors. So chroma transistors on the neck board. Who would have known? A lot cheaper than this uh, flyback that we just put in. But you know, these tend to go bad anyway. So, you know, I mean, I guess I did do good by swapping it out. So I'm going to keep the other one as a spare because it does work. And if something dies and uh, I don't want it down right away, I can just quickly swap it out and then just order a new one if I need to for another monitor. Because I do have a few K7000s in my, uh, in my collection here. So yeah, great, I'm so happy. Okay guys, that about does it for this episode. It looks like we got it working, which is awesome. I'm really happy about that. So we're just gonna put this monitor on the side as a spare, either a spare or we'll just use it for the uh, restoration of the Zookeeper, which I plan to do hopefully this summer. If not, uh, you know, when it gets maybe a little cooler in the fall. We'll see, because uh, I do have that Rolling Thunder I have to laminate. But there's a lot of stuff coming up on the channel. And um, if you guys haven't already seen it, there was a little Easter egg hint to that uh, LED on that TPG. I have a video on how to install that. It's under $5. It's really easy to do. And then I'll have a future video on how to install the AC adapter, which I bought as well. I'm just waiting for parts to arrive. Uh, we'll do that as well. So just these little videos here and there, tech videos. Hopefully you guys are enjoying it. I really enjoy making them. And we are approaching 3,000 subscribers. Once we hit 3,000, I will do a t-shirt campaign with Dell's Arcade on it. So you guys can purchase that directly from Teespring. That's probably what I'm going to go with. And all proceeds, of course, go towards the channel because I've invested a lot, you know, like getting this wireless microphone. And hopefully I'll get another uh, second camera and uh, memory cards and all that stuff. So everything that you guys, uh, you know, contribute towards always goes towards the channel, including the affiliate links below. I appreciate when you guys buy stuff. You know, people have told me on Twitter, hey... I bought stuff, you know, so that's awesome that you guys are doing that. So again, thanks. I'm really humbled by all that stuff. All right, so let's see you next time. Hopefully you guys can hit the like button and blow this up. And if you have any questions, again, I'm always here to answer them. Thanks and take care.